Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm going to show you the four easiest ways to defeat Radan Consort of Mikela in just a few seconds. Each of the following builds is entirely optimized to accomplish this specific purpose. I let the results speak for themselves, so let's jump straight into it. And as soon as you enter the arena, you heal again and you will have enough time to dodge the attack and attack him quickly. Nice. Nice, amazing, beautiful attack. And here we got the bleed proc, so go as quick as you can. And this is a lot of damage, bro. Dodge. Nice. Quickly. And keep attacking as much as you can. And he's done, bro. With this one, we are going to be rocking two gargoyles, twin blades on plus 25, one with the crack blade Ash of War, and one with the Seppuku Ash of War. The traditional or my classic build uses both twin blades with crack blade, but in this case, we are going to use Seppuku to be able to trigger the blade buffs before each fight, and it will also help with the bleed build up that it is going to be necessary to defeat this guy quickly. In your left hand weapon, you are going to use the crack blade one, and in the right hand, you are going to use the Seppuku one. I will explain why later. We need any seal we have available to cast our main buffs. And we need any weapon with the Raptor of the Mist of War to be able to dodge the Mikela's AoE attack or the Radan Light's Explosion. It doesn't matter how you want to call it, we are thinking about the same attack. In armor set, I'm going to be using the Greatbeard's Black Quill armor with two pieces of the Rakshasa's armor set and the White Mask. If you don't have this armor set, you can use the Raptor's Black Feathers, but I don't like how those things look. But as I said before, these builds are not based on style, are based on raw damage. So if you don't have this piece, feel free to use the Raptor's Black Feathers. The most effective talismans for this one are the Claw Talisman, the Rodent Wings or Insignia, Millicent's Prosthesis, and Lord of Blood's Exultation. In our Flask of Wondrous Physique, the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Thorny Crack Tear will stack together, dealing a lot of damage, along with the Rodent Wings or Insignia, the Millicent's Prosthesis, the Cloth. Uh, the they will stack together to deal a huge amount of damage. It is one of my favorite builds of all time. And with this build, we will also deal only physical damage, so the best body buff, once again, Blood Boil Aromatic. If you don't have it or if you don't like crafting, Flame Granny Strength is perfectly fine. And in this case, I will recommend you to have the Pickle Turtle Legs. It doesn't matter if are the Well Pickle Turtle Legs or the regular version. It is important because with each attack, we are going to use a lot of stamina. And to get the most out of this weapon, we are going to use the Scattered Tree Blessing on the level 20 to be able to deal as much damage as it's possible on the DLC bosses. We are going to be using 50 on vigor, 4 on endurance, 80 on strength, 15 on dexterity, 25 on faith, and 45 on arcane. Golden Vow and Flame Grand Strength are going to be our main buffs. Now I'll show you how to buff your character with this build, and I am going to explain why the Crack Blade Blade has to be in the left hand slot. So use your Flask of Wondrous Physic first, then Golden Vow, then your Pickle Turtle Neck, and now you switch to your left hand weapon with Crack Blade and you two hand it. Once you have it, use Crack Blade and then just go back to the normal position for the power stance moveset. Use your FP flask, use your uh, blood ball aromatic, your body buff, it doesn't matter which one it is. It, it actually matters. If you're going to use flame grand strength, you have to do it before, so I recommend you to use blood ball aromatic. Now refill your HP and you are going to use seppuku, and this way you are going to be ready for the match as quick as possible with both effects applied in your swords. And specifically in this Radan fight, you can heal just as soon as you enter the arena and you will be fine. You will have enough time to dodge and start attacking. If you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring, builds, MMO EXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMO EXP for sponsoring today's video. And we use this thing. Nice. Last one's blade, going crazy, dodging, I'm going crazy again. That is very good, we didn't take damage this time, that is amazing. And now re rebuff, use this thing again. And be ready to dodge. Now. Perfect. Attack him. And destroy him. And that's it. We took a little bit of damage, but we keep healing constantly, so it is a very easy way to defeat this guy quickly. I know this one might look a little bit overwhelming, but it's the new meta Blasphemous Blade build that everyone is using. So, Blasphemous Blade on plus 10, any seal we have available to cast our main boss, the deadly poison performed bottle to be able to poison ourselves before each fight, the poison hand to obtain a passive buff that will be active as long as we wear the poison hand in our off hand, and any weapon you have with the Raptor of the Mistache of War to be able to dodge the AoE explosion of Radan. A Rakshasa's armor set 
said as well with the mushroom crown this time because we are going to use the poison buffs shard of alexander talisman of the dread fire scorpion charm and the kindred of rot's exultation that is going to stack with the mushroom crown and the poison hand for a massive damage buff in our flask of wondrous physic the blood sucking crack tier and the flame shrouding crack tier will give us the max performance possible for this blade and this item is completely optional but it is going to be helpful if we want to rebuff while fighting i prefer using the fetid pots mid fight because using the poison perfume bottle is a little bit more complicated and we are going to use the neutral acid boluses to reduce the effect of the hp drain effect that we are receiving with the poison and with the blood sucking crack tier so this item is very important but it is not necessary most of our enemies will be destroyed before we even get to a point where we need to worry about our hp and if you don't know this every time you use the taker's flame skill of the blasphemous blade you are going to heal a lot of your hp percentage and a flat base uh, hp value that's why this weapon works very well with this type of buff because despite of losing a lot of hp in time we constantly heal just by playing with the weapon and as well you can use the pickle turtle lens for a more aggressive playstyle but it is completely optional scattergy blessing at the level 20 for max damage in the dlc we are going to rock 50 on vigor thorion mind thorion endurance thorion strength you don't need more strength here because we are going to obtain the max damage of the weapon from the skill not from the basic moveset that's why i am pushing fate all the way up to 95 and we are going to use golden vow and halo shabriri as our main buffs you can also use flame granny strength in this build but halo shabriri is a little bit better this one is a little bit complicated to buff so pay as much attention as you can first you have to use your flask of wondrous physic this is the thing of every day the golden vow thing now your pickle turtle neck if you want and hall of shabriri and from this point is where it gets a little bit complicated once you have cast hall of shabriri then you have to switch your seal for the poison perfume bottle then double hand it to be able to use the skill switch quickly to the poison hand two hand your weapon refill your fp your hp if you want cure the poison and once you are in the arena use the ferret pot so you are going to be able to rebuff in the second phase quickly with only another a uh, uh, rope fetid pot if you don't have the rope fetid pots it is going to be very complicated that you can do that with the regular pots or with the deadly poison perfume bottle but it is not necessary it's just for an extra amount of damage but the cool part about the blasphemous blade is that with every use of the skill you are going to be healing so that's why it is an easy way to defeat radan and get inside the the, the match Use your flask of uh, HP, dodge the attack, two hand your weapon, use royal knights, and start deflecting. Nice, you have the level set correctly. Nice. This is the attack you're looking for. Deflect this last one, and take it to the second phase. That is amazing. Now get close enough to the target, use royal knights, and use that heavy attack. And look at the damage. Now use it now. Raptor Optimista of War, of course. And he was, he's going to try leaving or that. But you are going to destroy him before. <laughs> yeah, this is a very easy way to defeat this guy. Although sometimes uh, the RNG might not be that good, but yeah, it's a very easy way to do it. Basically, this is our Sekiro build, but with a few tweaks to make it a little bit easier to use. We are going to be rocking the Sword Lance on plus 25 with the Royal Knight Resolve on the Heavy Affinity, and then still we have available to cast our main buffs. And don't forget any weapon with the Raptor of the Mistache War to dodge the AoE attack of Radan. I'm going to be rocking three pieces of the Rakshasa's armor set and the Black Dumpling. We are going to be rocking the H1 Exultation, the Corpse Sword talisman the two-handed sword talisman and the spear talisman the black dumpling and the h1 exaltation can be considered as madness buffs in the original version of this build i used the bleed buffs which are the white mask and the lord of blood's exaltation i did this change especially for one reason the black dumpling buff lasts for an entire minute so you're going to have a 10 percent extra damage for an entire minute while the white mask and the mushroom crown will last only 20 seconds in the same way than the talismans so even if you lose the buff of your talisman you will keep the 10 percent of the black dumpling and that is a very important difference compared to the other two buffs despite of the bleed buff being a little bit easier to use but in my opinion it is a little bit better to have a little more complex a uh, buff routine than having a tougher fight because of having a simpler buff routine so i made these changes to make the build more reliable in our flask of wondrous physic we are going to be using the blood sucking crack tier and the deflecting heart tier the blood sucking crack tier is very useful and the hp drain effect is not that bad to not use it and if you don't know how the deflecting heart tier works 
works, it will increase your damage by 20% with each successful deflect for your next guard counter, and it will stack up to 4 times, which means that if we successfully deflect 4 enemy attacks, the next guard counter will be boosted by 80%, and if we stack that 80% with the 80% of Royal Knight's resolve, the next hit is going to be completely destructive. And of course, this build consumes a decent amount of stamina because we are going to be using deflects, and sometimes we are going to miss the deflect, and that will count as a block, so be sure to craft some pickle turtle next to boost your stamina regeneration speed. I have my Scattership Blessing on the level 20 to deal as much damage as it's possible to the DLC bosses. If you want to deal the same amount of damage I'm dealing, be sure to have your Scattership Blessing on the level 20 too. The cool part of this build is that we are going to be using a little bit of more Vigor, 60 Vigor, 99 on Mind, 4 on Endurance, 99 on Strength, only 11 on Dexterity, and 33 on Faith. Golden Vow and Hall of Shabriri are going to be our main boss. To buff your character with this build, you have to use your Flask of Wondrous Physic first, and then you are going to cast Hall of Shabriri twice to start building up madness to proc the effect in the right moment. Now you have to use Golden Vow and your Pickle Turtle Neck. If it's necessary, refill your FP and cast Hall of Shabriri two times more. And as soon as madness procs, you are going to refill your FP you are going to two-hand your main weapon and you are going to go to the arena and you are ready to go, basically. Refill your FP, two-hand your weapon, you can hit your character and you enter the arena. And before starting to deflect, use Royal Knight's Resolve and with that you are going to deal a lot of damage on your next target. Remember that it's only a successful deflect when you hear that clank sound of your enemy weapon hitting your sword. Otherwise, it will only count as a block and it will drain a little bit of HP and a lot of stamina. Here we go. Nice. Take that bad boy. Nice. Now quickly try to deal the heavy attack as fast as possible, guys. So we deal a huge amount of damage. That's what I'm talking about. Dodge this. And defeat that guy quickly. You don't even need a charge heavy attack completely. <laughs> Just do it for fun. <laughs> this is definitely one of the easiest ways to defeat Radan. If you don't use the White Mask and the Lord of Blood's Exultation, it is going to be good as well, so this is only if you want to deal the max amount of damage possible. This is an improved version of the build we used yesterday. We are using the Mesmer Soldier Spear on plus 25 with the Royal Knight Resolve Ashwar on the quality affinity, any seal we have available to cast some buffs. This time we will use a weapon with Seppuku because we are integrating the bleed buffs to this build to make it a little bit more powerful and easier and even easier to use. I'm using the Rakshasa Armor Set with the White Mask, the Axe Talisman, the Two-Handed Sword Talisman, Spear Talisman, and Lord of Blood's Exultation. In the Physic Flask, I'm running the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Spike Crack Tear. If you want to deal the same amount of damage that I am dealing, you have to use this one as well. Uh, we are dealing only physical damage. If you want more details about this build, we talked about it just a day ago, so be sure to check it out. But here we are going to use Blood Dollar Matic because we are dealing only physical damage. And the Pickle Turtle Leg is completely optional, but it helps if you are extremely aggressive. I am using the Scattered Blessing on the level 20. I recommend you to do it, so your damage will be the same as mine if you are in the DLC. We are going to run 50 on Vigor, 4 on Endurance, 74 on Strength, 55 on Dexterity, and 25 on Faith. Golden Vow and Flame Grand Me Strength are going to be our main buffs. As I said before, this build is the same than yesterday's one. As I previously mentioned, we are going to buff this build as we did yesterday, but we are going to integrate the Bleed buffs. To buff your character with this build, use your Flask of Wondrous Physic first, then cast Golden Vow, then you are going to use your Flask of Wondrous Physic, and just after that we are going to use our Body Buff. In this case, it is going to be Blood Boil Aromatic, but you can use any other body buff you want. Once you have done that, you have to two-hand your Seppuku weapon, and you are going to use it, and just after that, you are going to refill your HP and your FP, and with that, you are ready to go. Once you are in the boss fight, you have to use Royal Knight's Resolve before dealing a consistent heavy attack, and that way you will defeat the boss very, very easily. 